I have the opportunity to interview Dr. Timothy Pollack, uh, who is the editor-in-chief of the Journal of GI Surgery, the journal for SS18, and also the chair of the Department of Surgery at the Ohio State University Wexner Medical Center. Uh, Dr. Pollack, thank you so much for agreeing to participate in the SSAT Mentor of the Month series and for your time. Dr. Altari, thank you so much for inviting me. I look forward to this. Thank you. Um, so I'll start with my, my first question. Uh, can you describe your path um, to surgery, how you got involved in SSAT, and the path to becoming an editor-in-chief of the Journal of GI Surgery? Sure, absolutely. So, you know, the SSAT has been an important organization to me for a long time, um, from residency to fellowship and even a, as a junior faculty member. You know, I think as one of, one of the premier gastrointestinal um, associations in the world, it was just a natural uh, fit for me, um, given my clinical interests in liver, pancreatic, and GI um, surgery. Um, there's been a lot of um, very esteemed individuals who have been part of the association, uh, both as members and in leadership roles, who I've looked up to, um, you know, over the past uh, 10 or 20 years. And there's a lot of great uh, opportunities within the society to get involved. And, um, and that's why um, it's been such a great experience for me to be a member. Um, in my capacity as the uh, co-editor-in-chief, also with Rich Hoden, who is at the MGH, we kind of have a partnership um, leading uh, the Journal of Gastrointestinal Surgery. That's been a wonderful experience to be in that leadership role, be able to interface with the SSAT and the leadership and act as the main publication vehicle for the society uh, to really disseminate all the great work that our members and some non-members obviously contribute to the uh, journal. So it's been a really uh, great uh, experience. As far as my path to becoming uh, you know, co-editor-in-chief of the journal, I mean, some of it um, was, um, you know, submitting my work, you know, as a resident, as a fellow, and as a junior faculty member. And I can remember John Cameron coming by the SSAT meeting and handing um, out his business cards when he was the uh, co-editor-in-chief of the journal with Dr. Kelly and asking us to submit our work. And then over time, you know, submitting our work to the journal, um, having it published, and then participating as a reviewer for many years and reviewing many papers and then getting onto the editorial board. And then after that, um, having the opportunity to step into this leadership role to help uh, run the journal as was just a kind of a natural uh, next step in the evolution of my kind of commitment uh, to the SSAT and to JOGS over the last 10 and 20 years. Thank you so much for sharing your experience. Um, I know there are a lot of initiatives to involve younger members of the society in the journal. How can one get involved as a reviewer for JOGS? So I think one of the is that you should, you know, think of JOGS um, to submit your best work. Um, I think that's the, the best way you can become involved um, because we look at the individuals who submit their best work to JOGS and it gets published and gets highly cited to then see them as, uh, identify them as high value authors and then typically those are not infrequently the people we reach out to to ask to review for the journal. So if you want to kind of get on our radar and get more involved with the journal, the first thing I would say is, you know, submit your best work to the Journal of Gastrointestinal Surgery, have it reviewed, and um, have it published, number one. The second thing I would say is, you know, when you are asked to review for the journal, um, you know, say yes, um, because, you know, we, we in all journals keep track of the number of times someone has been invited and the number of times that they either accept and or decline the invitation. And for individuals who de decline invitations, we're less likely to kind of ask them again. So if you wanna get involved, submit your work. And then when you're asked to review, say yes. And then the third thing is when you say yes, do a good job. Um, we are looking for people who are engaged um, in the reviewing process. It's an important part of academia to be in the peer review. Um, process and so you know spend a lot of time looking at the paper providing constructive comments to improve the work so that we know what ultimately is published in the journal is of high quality um, will be cited and will ultimately uh, impact uh, the care of patients with uh, gastrointestinal uh, diseases 
So you already mentioned some of the, the points, but what are some important points for people to remember when reviewing a paper? What, what, is the, what is so critical when reviewing a paper? So I think, you know, many people um, um, do it in different ways. In my mind, there's, there's two large categories. There's kind of content expertise, and then there's methodologic expertise. So I think when we call upon our reviewers, I'm largely looking for input in those two main areas. So in regards to content expertise, you know, is this something that would be of interest to people in your particular field, whether it be colorectal, esophageal, pancreatic, liver? Because you know, I don't do esophageal surgery, I don't do colorectal surgery, so it's sometimes hard for us as editors and chiefs to figure out, is this a hot topic in this particular area of gastrointestinal diseases? And we rely on our reviewers to say, this is topical, this is interesting, this is novel. So as a reviewer, help us identify whether this topic is novel, um, whether it's gonna bring something new and different to the literature, and then also, is it going to impact patient care? Because ultimately, the goal is to publish data and information that will then be recognized by your peers as being important, have that information disseminated, and then ultimately impact and improve the care of our patients. So we're really relying on reviewers to help us with that. The other thing that we're relying on is kind of methodologic expertise, you know, or the method sound. You know, it may be an interesting idea, but if it wasn't done properly, if it was underpowered or the statistics weren't rigorous, then obviously we're very interested in that also. Personally, I always start off looking um, at two big questions. Is it novel? Because there's a lot of kind of duplicative literature out there. And the other thing I look at is, is it methodologically sound? Because if it's not methodologically sound, even if it's very novel or new or interesting, you know, it has to be scientifically sound. So those are the things that I would, uh, you know, kind of highlight. And for reviewers to keep in mind that we are looking for constructive criticism so that the, re the author can take that, the input from the reviewers, and then incrementally improve their work to lead to a much better paper that would hopefully eventually be published in our journal. Great, thank you. Um, do you know of any good resources for beginners uh, for reviewing? So I think I have a couple ideas on that. I mean, I think for young people, one thing is to try to participate in uh, journal clubs, um, which are frequently occur at uh, all of our institutions, both at the resident level and even at the junior faculty level. I think that can be incredibly helpful for uh, people to meet as a group, discuss an article, um, and hear different people's perspective about the methods, where they sound, where they not, um, because different people in the group will have different levels of expertise around, you know, methodology, whether it be, you know, um, longitudinal cohort, survival analyses, mixed methods, whatever it shall be. And then I think also, you know, getting different people's input around the novelty of the work is important. So I think the first thing is try to participate in journal clubs. The second thing is read the literature yourself frequently. You know, I think it's important that as academic surgeons, we are grounded in the literature. So I'd recommend that people read our journal, read JOGS on a monthly basis and see what our articles are in there. I think that's also important. And then I think another thing that can be important is um, there are courses and some are offered, you know, at the SSAT about how to review a paper, you know, and I and others have spoken at those uh, workshops. So I would encourage young people to um, avail themselves of the opportunities that are put forth through the SSAT to take some of these workshops um, from editors like myself that kind of discuss what are the tricks of the trade when reviewing um, manuscripts and how one can kind of get um, involved more to eventually get on an editorial board. Thank you so much. I, I, I agree. The, the workshops are really valuable, for, especially for young reviewers. Um, what are the reviewers' do's and don'ts uh, as an editor? So I think one thing to um, you know, uh, look out for is um, you know, not having like a super brief um, you know, review, just like a sentence or something. Like that, that doesn't really help me if someone you know, just writes a sentence, right? So you know, I think you, you want to really give some thought into the review um, and have it be 
potential, and typically it's bulleted or numbered, so the number of different points, I think that's important. Um, I think being specific, um, saying something's good or bad, you know, the, these general terms aren't helpful, but be very specific. Like, you know, I think this, this wasn't the appropriate statistical test when using this. You should have used the chi-squared rather than this or whatever it is. That's helpful. Um, you know, trying to look at previous literature to help us know if it's novel or not. So if this has already been published upon, you know, even in the review saying there were three papers, here they are, you know, the PubMed kind of um, citations on this exact topic, this isn't novel, that's helpful because it's very concrete. You're not just saying it's not novel, you're actually showing me three papers that were published on the exact same topic. And so it's very evident to the authors that indeed it is not novel. Um, and then I think the other thing is just make sure that whatever recommendation you give is consistent with your comments. It's not infrequent sometimes for perhaps even more junior reviewers that they may give a glowing review or a seemingly glowing review and then they recommend reject. And so the two don't match, right? Or they'll be incredibly harsh in the comments of the review and then recommend accept. So you want to make sure that your recommendation is consistent with the text and the body of your review. And then the final thing I would say is that um, as a reviewer, you're largely, your role is largely to um, advise and recommend not to make an editorial decision of reject or accept. So I would avoid that type of language in the body of your review. Um, and so because that, that information is sent on to the authors and so it's not helpful for the reviewer to write reject this paper in, in, that, in their comments because there may be a second or third reviewer who really liked the paper and it can lead to mixed messaging uh, to the authors. So keep it very fact oriented, keep it specific, make sure that your comments reflect your recommendation and keep an eye out for being constructive in your criticism to improve the overall body of work that the authors have submitted to the journal. Great, thank you. Um, and um, what is some good feedback for the authors specifically? Uh, what is more most important to provide the authors when their manuscript is rejected? So I, I think that's a little bit um, uh, of, a, of a tougher question. I, in my mind, I think there are some papers that you know just aren't novel at all, or they're so poorly done, and they're going to get rejected. And frankly, I and most people shouldn't spend a lot of time on those papers if they're just so kind of up beyond the pale, so to speak, that they get rejected. Then there's other papers that are so amazing that they're going to accept with minor revisions and actually don't need that much input from us because they're already so amazing. That's pretty uncommon too. I think in the middle, we're trying to identify those papers that are pretty good, right? They're pretty good. They're maybe like a B or a B minus, B plus yet with constructive input from the editors and the reviewers, we can make them an A. So I think providing very specific to the, to the authors is what is most um, helpful um, in telling them exactly where you think some of the flaws are in their paper and then be very specific about what you want to see from them. Um, so, you know, you didn't do this, I'd like you to run these additional analyses, or you included this cohort of patients and I think they should have been excluded, you need to redo the analysis and have excluded those patients. Or this point is unclear in the discussion, you need to look at paragraph three of the discussion and rewrite it or add these additional references. So again, I think the more specificity that you can provide the authors, that gives them more to kind of really focus on how to improve the paper rather than kind of open-ended, you know, big picture comments that lack direction. Great. Well, that uh, concludes our Mentor of the Month series. So Dr. Pollock, thank you so much for your advice and your time. Uh, it has been a pleasure interviewing you. Oh, well, this has been fantastic. I really appreciate it, uh, Maria. This has uh, been wonderful. And again, I'd just like to really emphasize to everyone, get involved with the SSAT. It's a wonderful organization, association, has a lot to offer, a lot of opportunities for young people. 
And again, please um, consider submitting your strongest work to the Journal of Gastrointestinal Surgery. We're always honored to have people submit their work to our journal, and we work very hard to have an efficient um, review process uh, for authors so their work can be uh, published in a short amount of time. Um, and so again, um, thank you and thank the SSAT. It's a wonderful privilege to be co-editor-in-chief of, uh, of JOGS. And uh, again, thank you very much.